Thank you for joining Performance Product Technologies at our video series. This video is going to cover installing side exit through hole exhaust on a Cranline boat that is equipped with a Volvo Penta 5.7 liter GI stern drive engine. We're going to start this project by removing the intermediate exhaust elbows. Those are the elbows that connect from the exhaust elbow or riser and go down to your Y pipe. The purpose in doing this is that you need to find the proper location where you're going to install the side exit tips. So here you're going to insert the uh, diverter into the existing bellows using the two stainless steel hose clamps. And then this is where you'll get your position. And then you're going to trace that down and mark your position on the hull of the boat. So we're going to start out by laying out the side exit tip and then the intermediate pipes and connectors. You can see here as we're laying it out, you can get the proper location so that you get the bins and everything pointed in the proper direction. From here, we're just going to move to the other side and do the same thing. So you can see the, the intermediate pipe that we've removed. We already have the diverter inserted into the bellows um, using the same hose clamps and we're going to find the location for the opposite side. This would be the starboard side in this case and we're going to find the location of where we need to install the side exit tip. We'll point out here that you want to make sure and get your hose clamps installed where your diverter connects to the Y pipe which is what forces the exhaust out through the drive. But basically we're just going to repeat the same process where we lay out all the individual components, get the orientation right so that we know we have everything located properly. Now that we have our layout in place, we need to figure out exactly where the location of the exhaust tips is going to be. You can find reference points inside the boat so that you can then, once you get everything oriented properly, you can go in and, and measure from that, like in the view where your, your discharge is for the bilge water, you can measure from that point and figure out exactly where your tip needs to be located. You can see what we've done here is we've taken a piece of cardboard and we made ourselves a template. This is really crucial in locating the tip on the side of the boat. It gives you the exact hole location that you're going to cut and it also clearly identifies how much area you need for the flange. So we've, by this point, we've already measured inside of the boat by laying out all the components you saw earlier. You've laid those out and you know the basic point of where that flange needs to be located. It's important to note that the the connections between the rubber connectors and the intermediate pipes and everything, they allow for a considerable amount of flexibility so you can twist those and turn those and find the location once you know where it's at. But you can see here we're going to take the tape. Once we've traced that and we know where we're going to be cutting out, we tape the border of that so that we don't go anywhere outside of that and also to prevent the gel coat from chipping away. Uh, when you go to cutting it. But once we get the perimeter of that tip marked, we're going to go in with a sawzall and cut that out. So we're going to repeat the same process here on the other side, uh, doing the same thing. You can notice here when we drill the hole, we typically drill, when you drill into fiberglass, you want to drill with the bit running in uh, reverse. That keeps it from grabbing the gel coat, uh, which can chip the gel coat uh, and cause issues. Uh, if you do that, but we're going to basically repeat the process. Go ahead and cut out the other side here as well. At this point, now that we have everything cut, we're going to go ahead and insert the tips into the holes we cut, and then go ahead and make a loose connection on the inside with your other components to make sure everything connects and fits up properly, and you don't have any uh, issues with, with things fitting together correctly. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and put them in. We're going to mark our holes for the flange mounts where we're going to have to come back and drill our holes. Once we do that, we're going to put the bit in reverse and we're going to make that initial uh, hole. And then we're going to go ahead and drill on through once we get done with that. And basically you're undersized drilling the hole because you're going to have uh, screws that screw directly into the 
into the wood and hold those flanges in place. So basically you're going to repeat the same exact process on the other side too, putting things in, connecting it loosely on the inside, making sure everything fits correctly uh, before you come back and mark your holes and drill everything. Once you get the holes drilled, we like to use a Phillips bit and basically just chamfer that hole. It basically keeps the, the gel coat from chipping um, and creating any, any chips basically from once it goes. Uh, you put the other screw in so it doesn't pull the gel coat up and create a flake or anything like that. So it's just kind of a way to chamfer the hole and clean it up. Okay, so now that we have the holes cut and the holes drilled, we're going to go ahead and install the discharge tips. You want to use a sealant on this, and you want to make sure and be liberal when you apply the sealant on there. You can always come back and clean up around the perimeter of the tip. And you also want to use some of the sealant to seal the holes that the screws are going to screw into. You want to basically protect the wood from any moisture or anything getting in there to that point. Then you'll go ahead and tighten the, the flange down once you get everything sealed and in place. You're going to repeat the process on the other side. It doesn't really matter whether you, you apply the sealant to the, to the inside of the flange or directly on the boat, just so long as you get it applied 100% of the way around 360 degrees. And also that you have the holes uh, for the mounting screw sealed in as well. So you'll go ahead and fasten the other side down just like you did on the other side. Get it tight and in place. Next you will need to wait the proper amount of time based on whatever sealant you use to wait the proper amount of time to let things set up properly. Uh, you don't want to get in here and start moving stuff around before the sealant on the flanges has set. But basically the next step you're going to go ahead and start piecing everything together. Uh, there's Coast Guard regulation that requires all of the, the connections that are at the waterline or below have to be double clamped with the stainless steel type hose clamps. But you can also see here at this point that the pipe, by the way it twists and the angles in it, it allows for taking up some uh, some position, you know, if everything didn't fit uh, exactly straight, you can twist it. Uh, but I basically point that out because that helps you when you locate it on the front end. You can see that you do have some give in it uh, when it all goes together. But you also want to think about the location of the, the hose clamps, the head, whether it be on the top or the bottom for accessibility. You may be back in here standing on your head uh, servicing it at a later point. But basically go ahead and get everything clamped together and next we'll be ready to move on to installing the switch and connecting the wiring. Next we'll be moving on to the wiring. Uh, this is a captain's call through hole exhaust kit and it comes with wiring instructions that basically is pretty, pretty straightforward, tells you exactly how to connect everything together. They do make a single discharge side exit uh, kit but this particular one uses two different diverters and doesn't tee the exhaust together. So in that case you basically have a diverter on each side of the exhaust and then it connects together. So basically you're going to connect the wiring from the one side and run it across and plug the two together on the main side and then you're going to run from there up to the helm. You can see they give you a nice bracket that connects right at your exhaust elbow on the starboard side. It holds the circuit breaker and everything as part of the kit. Then you're going to plug the two together, connect the two sides together, and then you're going to run your wiring from there up to the helm. Basically it's pretty straightforward. You have to have obviously supply the 12 volts power to it and up to the switch and then ground it. But everything is pretty well packaged together and the instructions are very uh, straightforward and, and giving you directions on how to connect everything together. At this point you're ready to do a walk around. Uh, after you have the, the wiring all connected, all of your hose clamps and plumbing is in place, you're ready to do a walk around visual, make sure everything is ready to go. And in this case, we would recommend that you start the, start the motor on earmuffs and not splashing the boat in the water yet because 
you want to verify that you don't have any leaks inside. But basically, we're going to go ahead and fire it up on the earmuffs. Uh, somebody's running the switch at the front. You're going to come back and visually verify that the diverters are functioning properly. You're going to be checking the inside, verify that you don't have any water leaks at your hose clamps and connections. Uh, you need to do this obviously on both sides because you've got two separate diverters working in this case. Uh, once we verify that everything's functioning there, then we'll come to the outside, basically walk through, and now's the time for the good stuff when you can hear it. Um, visually verify that it's that it's switching properly and and even when it's switched that you don't still get exhaust coming out the side discharge tips as well and and when you switch it you can see that it's uh, forcing everything down through the through the drive but this is basically it you reiterate once again you do want to verify once you put the boat in water the first time that you don't have any leaks on the inside or anything of that nature but uh, that's it. So we appreciate you following us at Performance Product Technologies and we look forward to having you back next time.